Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the last segment of Youth Matters where we are discussing online trading and the risk associated with that. Uh, in this final segment, we will look at the risk specifically and also, you know, things that you need to do before you think about investing online. As we have cryptocurrency, we have online trading, we have a lot of money. So, please, number of screen, we have a lot of money, we have a lot of views, we have a lot of money. Ustad Salman, um, from what uh, Ashraf Mujibul was saying, it, it, it feels like... Um, money out of nothing. Is that allowed in Islam? Well, as I said, in principle, it's not, although it's a system that's imposed on us. And um, actually, I, I can sympathize with some of the uh, points made earlier about it being decentralized because... Uh, because there's the, no the, government the, backing as well, is there? Um, well, well, actually, decentralization might be a good thing because uh, banking, I'm, I'm a banking lawyer by trade. I, I worked in the big law firm here in, in Dubai. And sure. so I think I understand how banking works. And if you ask me banking, as we understand it today, and the, and the money creation process, private banks create money, it's the biggest legalized fraud in human history. Yeah. People don't realize, but banks actually create money. So when somebody goes to the bank to borrow 300,000 pounds to buy a house, where did that 300,000 pounds come from? It actually, it's actually whipped out of thin air. They literally type it as a digital entry onto the computer, and it starts to exist as a form of credit. So is this how cryptocurrency seems to have a feel to that? Am I, would I be right in... Well, well, what what can, can, I, can I just yes. come in? If cryptocurrency, in one sense, it's it's not made out of thin air because it's 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 software, like it, like you have on but your. But could laptop. anyone create that software, Mujibur? It, any it does, anyone can create it because the, so anyone the, can create a currency, digital currency, out of thin air. They can't duplicate it. They can create their own. Absolutely, they can create their own currency. There's websites there you, you can wow. create your own currency. But the issue is whether it will have any weight sure. because this is the issue. Okay. So when, you know, when if I people believe in it, Sorry. then then they will value it, and then that's where the value value comes in. Whereas if, <coughs> if, if I don't believe in it, you know, if I'm standing next to a waterfall and I'm, I've got bottles of water, who's going to want it from me? Whereas if I'm in the desert with a bottle of water, there's value there. Okay. So it's w what people see. Can I get uh, yeah. Simon into yeah. this? So th th when I say made out of thin air, nothing's usually made out of thin air. When the government creates a pound or a five pound note, it doesn't come out of thin air. There's some technology that goes into creating and encrypting that five pound note. So there is some cost to creating even artificial currency. Sure. That doesn't mean that it, it, it's a representation of real value as a commodity in the market. Because every time a new five pound note is issued or a new cryptocurrency is issued, that dilutes the existing stock and by stealth takes away wealth from people. How so important is it to have government backing? Because it feels like you know, in this country, well, that in principle, in for, Islamic, for that Sharia, Islamic Sharia, Islamic Sharia, as society. a matter of law, Islamic Sharia does not require that a currency is issued by a government. Okay, it's, it's, the Sharia is actually all about freedom of trade. So people in the marketplace should be able to decide what they want to exchange as a, as a currency. Okay, I've got so, a caller on yeah. the line. Uh, if I come back to you, Salaam alaikum, caller. Uh, wa alaikum salam, uh, Thank you for calling, brother. Uh, how would you like to contribute to the discussion? Okay, Zulakullah Khaydan for taking my call. Um, I had a few different questions. I think they might um, be relevant for different guests. Um, do you mind if I go ahead and say them? Can you just really quickly uh, answer, uh, ask your questions uh, because we're okay, very short. Right. First of all, first one I think goes to Ustaz Salman because it's a more Sharia related one. And that is, um, there's a lot of stuff going out there. I think there was a fatwa issued yesterday by one of the, the well-known chefs. So my question is, if there is going to be any ruling of Hurma, of any ruling of it being impermissible, in as simple terms as possible, what would be the line of argument? So, for example, yesterday we had one saying, Alalahul Khalqu wal Amr, that only Allah can create money. But there seems to be a gap in the sense that, where, how do we know that that applies to making money as opposed to making transport or anything else? Uh, that's one question. The other question is more of a technical one, <clears throat> and that is, uh, there's a whole um, kind of hype about the anonymity and the security behind the blockchain and so on and so forth. So a couple of scenarios I was thinking of. One is if somebody was, um, you know, physically forced into giving their um, private key over and uh, as a result, you know, thieves were to transfer all of their bitcoins into another account. Is there any way for that person to retrieve that money? Because in a banking system, you know, there's fraud and there's kind of um, uh, some way he can fall back on. Likewise, you know, when we're traveling nowadays, um, if someone is forced, for example, to give their private key, and because all of the history of the transactions are recorded, does that mean that the authorities or anybody else, if they force them to, they could get a record of every single transaction that they've ever made? 
So the reason why I ask that question is, is there really like deep down security in it? Thank so you, they're the questions. Zakum Zakum Lahai for your great question. Can I, sorry, can I, one last question I've got. Really quickly, I brother. need the introduction. So I was wondering, uh, Brother Mujibul, if you could just mention his uh, background. That's fine. That would be wonderful. Okay, so Mujibu, uh, Brother Mujibul's background is a teacher and also a crypto investor. Uh, Brother Ashraf is a business analyst and a crypto investor. And uh, Ustad uh, Salman is a finance lawyer and also uh, part of the Sharia Council in the UK. Um, Ustad, um, no, no, I, I'm not part of any Sharia Council. Uh, sorry, um, uh, apologies. Ustad is a um, Sharia scholar and also Islamic finance lawyer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so coming back to you, Ustad, the first question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is is to do with you know uh, the fatwa that uh, or yeah, something yeah, that circulated yeah. yesterday. So, 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 so now building on all those principles that I've tried to sort of lay out in this conversation, um, the, the, the the basic situation is we we suffer from umumul balwa in relation to pounds and dollars. We we can't but use them. Okay, so so the principle is we can use them in order to 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 exchange things, but we cannot use them to speculate on their value. So if I if I change my pounds to dollars in order to bet against the pound or bet on the dollar, then that that, that then th that doesn't serve any purpose of exchange. So that in itself would be prohibited in my view. Um, and by extension, if you have other forms of artificial currency, if I if I buy a Bitcoin in order to buy a, something from Australia to, to, to have an efficient medium of exchange, that might be allowed if that's the only way to get to it, or if it's a, if it's a better way to get to it than to use to exchange my pounds for dollars through a bank. Sure. That might be permitted. But if I buy a bitcoin in order to participate in the speculative bubble, I would say that that is very circumspect, and we should be aware of that. Okay. Um, and Ashraf, you uh, you wanted to uh, answer the second question. Uh, yeah, if I understood correctly, the second question was on the security, that's right? That's correct. So yeah. So the, the the key thing here is obviously as if I own. Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency or token, then the sole responsibility lies with the individual. So in his, the example like that someone's was someone's forced to exactly. So if they, in that example, if someone's forced again, it's the measures that you take. For example, we have these things which are called hard wallets. Like think of it as a USB. You can put your cryptocurrency, your Bitcoin, on that Ledger Nano. But what you can have is two separate passwords. One is your real password, and the second one is like a dummy password for a um, dummy account whereby you deposit some kind of, of Bitcoin, but not all of it, so to, 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 to kind of go against that scenario. But fundamentally, the point is, if, if someone actually gets hold of that, then yeah, they'll, they'll take ownership of that. The point about the blockchain is that, yes, you'll have a record. But in the, I think in the past few days, an exchange called CoinCheck was hacked and uh, worth 500 uh, millions worth of uh, cryptocurrency was stolen. But now the only way to actually uh, stay true to the principles of decentralization, the only way to actually get that money back is if the whole community that are involved in that cryptocurrency come to the general consensus that they can create what they call a fork so they can uh, get back their, their value. But yeah, that is a fundamental risk involved. Thank you. Mujibul, um, it, there's an expectation that in the future uh, we'll have uh, paperless uh, electronic currency and cryptocurrency. If that's the case, if people don't invest now, are they not to a certain extent losing out? Um, people need to be educated, I think, um, before they can do anything. Um, for me, this is the future. This is the way the future will be. It's like the internet, but at the early stages. We're still the early uh, adopters. As time goes on, more and more facilities will, will come about. So, for example, in, in America, they, they use it quite a lot. Japan does it quite a lot. There was a, an article uh, recently that, that came out from one of the global firms that said um, Japan's GDP increased by 0.3%, something like that. So that was showing that Bitcoin is adding value. Uh, to, to, to the country, and Japan is no small country, it's, it's sure. a very uh, high achieving, uh, developed country. But it's, it's, it's the, uh, once people realize the uh, significance of this, that's when it will become valuable. For example, a lot of your viewers will be sending money to Bangladesh. Now, how much money is taken via fees? How long does it take? If I were to own a Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, I can send a huge amount of money with a fraction of the cost. And this is the, the power behind this technology. What, what cryptocurrency has done, it's revolutionized money. It will be revolutionizing money. All other industries have been or are being revolutionized, but money hasn't been. And this is what cryptocurrency does. Thank you. The one last point, when we say cryptocurrencies, it's just not, not just about money, it's also yeah. projects. There's a whole industry 
in cryptocurrency to do with the internet of things how blockchain technology can empower our lives and that's another little discussion okay. um, we What's can that, have. Uh, Simon if you uh, could respond to that. Yeah I'm not sure that um, digitization revolutionizes what money actually is it might make the transfer of money more efficient so there was a time when the checkbook actually revolutionized money because it enabled people to pay checks and send them abroad um, and when you had digital uh, banking that revolutionized banking but it didn't change the fundamental nature of money. So I think from a Sharia perspective, uh, efficiencies are welcome. If technology can improve the way we transfer money across borders, that, that's, that's a welcome thing. But from, 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 from the perspective of Hukum Shari, we need to look at fundamentally what is that medium of exchange that we're creating and whether it's in principle uh, approved by Sharia. And if it's not, then is it allowed by Sharia in, within the circumstances sure. as, 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 as a plan B? Just, yeah. could just to touch on that point, um, I think we need to understand the value of, I know we keep going on about yeah. Bitcoin, but it is worth to go on something else. But just on Bitcoin, last thing for me, is that to understand the value of a Bitcoin, I think it's worth to distinguish between economically what um, a currency is and what a money is. For example, a currency, fiat currencies are classified as a currency, whereas gold and silver would be examples of what a money is. In the fact that, yeah, they both can be used as a medium of exchange and they have a lot of similarities, but the, the key difference the way I understand it is that gold and silver has intrinsic value and it can be used as a store of value. And if you look at the charts, Bitcoin has volatility, but it has volatility in an upward trend since it's begun. Whereas if you look at the dollar, for example, since its inception, it has volatility, but in a downward trend. So if you ask me in any, in, in any way you look at it, it is a currency, Bitcoin, but it can also be considered more of a store of value than a dollar will ever be. Can I just Thank make you. two points? Like, I'm, I'm like on Bit tri Bitcoin has its in intrinsic value. It takes about $1,000 of electricity to produce one Bitcoin. So there is an intrinsic value there. But also going on to the point of uh, Sheikh Salman, which is that a lot of what is there is will not be here in a year's time. So this is where you do have to do your research. A lot of, I mean, there's, you know, thousands of, of coins and projects there you know some of them will have no real life case so this is where when you're investing you do have to do your research does this coin have a real life case you know will it will it bitcoin is the one that people know about but in terms of the technology there are other things better sure. with better technology than bitcoin okay. um, other projects that have real life case for example there's a coin called uh, misa go which is going to be uh, uh, accepted in in thailand i think mcdonald's is going to accept that cryptocurrency so those are examples of projects that are going to be coming into the real life thank scenario you. thank you Just coming on that um, point the, uh, the 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 nominal energy used to, to issue a form of currency doesn't give it an intrinsic value because it costs the Bank of England something to create a five pound note and a ten pound note it costs the same to, to create a five and a ten pound note but but the value in the five pound and ten pound note is different because it's, it's given by designation. That's the artificiality of it. So it doesn't really give it a, an intrinsic value simply because it costed something to create the, 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 the token. Okay, yeah. Ustad, um, you know, as we come towards the end of the show, what are your kind of main concerns about the risks with this type of currency, digital currency? Yeah. So I, I think, um, going back to the upward trend, um, in any bubble, there will always be an upward trend. In the tulip mania, in the tulip bubble, there was an upward trend. So just because there's an upward trend doesn't necessarily mean it's a, it's a good uh, storage of value in the long term over hundreds of years. Okay? Because what we're seeing is just an upward trend in, in what could be just a price bubble that collapses. And it could be the people holding the baby at the end who are the ultimate losers. I mean, there are losers and winners along the way as well, as we see with the, with the deflations and the inflations. So th the concern I have is, at the moment, uh, cryptocurrencies are being used as in, 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 a, in, a, in a small way as a medium of exchange. People are using them to make payments across borders and there are some efficiencies and some, some benefits to that. But largely when people ask me, can I invest in cryptocurrency? What they mean is, can I buy some, some of these coins to hold on to them, to participate in this mania so that hopefully it will double the price mm. and then I'll, I'll make a financial buck out of it. What they're doing is participating in essentially what looks to me like a casino. And, and that, that's the problem I have with it. Unt until the currency stabilizes and becomes actually a form of currency that is stable and, and used as a medium of exchange as opposed to a medium of speculation. But say if someone was to put yeah. X amount into a cryptocurrency and yeah. leave it for a year, is that different to that casino uh, example that you gave? Because that's more long-term investment. 
they're actually looking to seriously well they're invest. not would that be yeah, then different no, it's, it's not different if i put if i buy buy british telecom shares i'm investing in the activities of british telecom which is to provide telecommunication yeah. services and that business grows and i'm actually investing in the the computers and the staff and all the activities and the services of that company whereas when you buy a bitcoin what you, you're not actually investing in any activity you're putting your money in and hoping that more demand will generate an inflation of price you're speculating on the price of an artificial unit it's very very different Okay. Two things. First, I 100% I agree there is speculation, which is why I don't inter interday trade, because there's so much volatility. My approach is obviously to find a good project, as we touched on, which is not necessarily a currency, because for people at home, they may just make the one-to-one -one connection sure. that cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. So just to clarify that, there are projects, for example, if I gave you the opportunity to go back in time and say, you can invest in the uh, new version of Google, the new version of uh, Amazon, the new version of Airbnb, would you take that? Would you think that was a great opportunity? That's exactly what we have right now, but it's decentralized. There's a decentralized decentralized version of Airbnb, decentralized version of Amazon. These aren't currencies in the same in the way of their medium of exchange. They're a token which has a utility which exists in their own ecosystem. And that is obviously slightly different um, to what we discussed. But on the, on the point of the Tulip example, yes, there is volatility. But what is key to is key difference here between Tulip and Bitcoin is that, for example, there's been nine corrections where it's, it's fallen by more than 30%. And there's been two corrections where it's fallen by more than 80%. But yet for every correction that happens, it still goes up. So I think for me, it's more healthy, the healthy corrections that will, you know, and for people, anyone investing, they need to bear in mind that that can happen. So that it's, it's about picking the entry point. So if you get in at these projects early, you know, it's, you're minimizing your risk, granted, but there is speculation, but you're not involved in the trading of the actual token or okay, whatever thank it is. You for so, that, so from my understanding of the description of projects as opposed to the coins, uh, they do seem very different. Um, so if you're investing in a project which, where each token represents something of utility, like um, a visit to the funfair or um, you know, somebody would come and fix, fix, your, fix your washing machine, mm -hmm. uh, a service, then that token actually represents something of value. It's very different to an artificial currency. It's a bit like if I go to the funfair, I mm -hmm. call this a funfair scenario, where I go into the funfair and the, 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 the funfair doesn't accept pounds and, 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 and euros or whatever. They, they have their own specific tokens. So you have to exchange your 10 pounds to buy 10 tokens. Yeah. And that each token has a utility because it gives me one ride on a, in the funfair, yeah. right? Yeah. That's not the same as the, the Bitcoin. That, that, so the, I would distinguish between projects which aren't artificial currency, sure. which do actually represent something of underlying value. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, so if someone was to purchase a project... Now, having said that, I haven't looked at all the projects. That's I've, fine. I've simply heard, I've heard based, his description. On that principle, based on his based description. Kind of, yeah. yes. Just to clarify, when you do it, the only key difference is uh, to distinguish is that like an I, 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 uh, IPO, an I, this is an ICO, you don't buy a share in the company. That's the only key distinction. But you buy the coin, which then runs in that ecosystem, as, as, he, as he explained. Okay. Can I just, well, I just, just to add uh, on, uh, here's a question for the Sheikh. Um, these are, if you like, startups in a way, you know, these things, there's developments that will, that will happen. So with these coins, for example, there's huge issues of scaling. Um, you know, it takes a long time to transfer money. So as the, the project develops, these things will become faster. These things will become more mainstream. So still possessing these coins, is that, is that not allowed? Um, at the moment, if you say to me that, oh, a lot of wealth is exchanged in a casino, right? So let's get in on the game while it's there and go into the casinos and gamble and let's not be, let, let the Muslims not be losers in this game. Because many right? are saying that. Because many are saying that. And that, that argument smacks of saying, well, let's go to the casino or let's go to the derivatives market. And those who are der der derivative traders out there, they know that it's just a big casino where they're slicing up and selling risks in different ways. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, billions of pounds of wealth and value are exchanged in the worldwide money markets and derivatives markets, does that mean Muslims should get in on the game? And the answer to that, I think, is intuitive. Uh, while it's a speculation bubble, uh, we need to be very, very, very careful about this. Sure. Um, so, uh, what would you say to people who say, look, you know, if in, say, 10 years' time, uh, governments decide to um, operate and run on cryptocurrencies. Well, they're already saying the it, the Bank of England. This so, so, in the so, media. If they, yeah. if, so if yeah. that is the direction that we're heading towards, yeah. it's, an, it's going back to what Mujibun Ashraf was saying, that then we are to a certain extent as a community, are we not well, no, losing if, out? If the Bank of England issues a cryptocurrency, I mean, the reality is when I, go, when I, when I log onto my phone and I, and I enter my bank account and I transfer some money, I'm transferring a digit from my account to someone else's account. That's encrypted. 
that is already a form of cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency isn't, I mean, there is some blockchain technology it's, which I is I would new. say it's a digital currency, but not a cryptocurrency. OK, it's slightly different. but it has its own, it has a different type of encryption. Sure. So that's what I'm saying. It's a different, it's a different technology. Sure. What I'm saying is that the technology will move on. The Bank of England will adopt, probably will adopt, cryptocurrency in order to make transfers and exchanges. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, and what they will do when they do that is they will say one Bank of England cryptocurrency is worth one pound paper money, right? They'll just make an equivalent. That's fine, that, so, so just because we don't participate in Bitcoin doesn't mean we'll be left behind. We're very short there's on time. another Would point here, which could, is uh, decentralization. The whole uh, background to this was because the centralized system failed the, the people. That's right. So Mujib will uh, answer this. Uh, have we missed the bubble? Has the is this a bubble that's uh, where those who went in at an early stage have gained from it, and now everyone else is trying to kind of grab as much as they can? Or have we, have we missed the train? For for me, every industry has had corrections, market corrections. If you look at um, stocks and shares and Apple and all these kind of prices, they've gone up and they've gone down and they've gone up and down. So there there's been corrections. Um, so for me, it's 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 welcome in this industry. It needs that. Um, so I don't think it's a bubble. It's that fundamental research that you have to do. It's the technology. You have to do that research. I think one of the things that people have at this moment in time is that they want easy answers. They don't want to do the research. They just want to know, you know, can I put my money in this? Can I yeah. put my money in that? But you have to do that research. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't do that, then, then nothing will, will you, happen. So you do have to do your research. And uh, Ashraf, what would be your advice to you know, young people watching this at home? This is Youth Matters. Um, just before, obviously, I'll answer that. But I think obviously key disclaimer in any discussion like this is that I'm not a financial advisor, so it's not a science advice. Fine. But um, just on the point that was discussed as well is that if a bank was to or government to adopt it, the key principle here is that it would still be centralized. So it would not be decentralized. And the key thing with the, the digital world has been very good about creating um, abundant digital assets. For example, if I send you a picture, we all have a mobile phone. If I send you a picture, you, re you receive the picture, but I still retain a copy. And that's great for communication, but for a value transfer, that's terrible. So what would be your advice? Thank you so, for that. But my, yeah. my advice, obviously, to that is, as, as we touched on, is to do, the, to do the research into what blockchain, blockchain actually is. If you don't understand it, you shouldn't be investing, as Warren Buffett famously said. And you should check, do they have a prototype? Invest these projects. Check the projects out. Don't make the one-to-one -one micro connection that cryptocurrency is only Bitcoin. Bitcoin is only 30% of the market. There's thousands of other projects that have these potentials to change the world, revolutionize supply chains and everything else. So check the team check the prototype, um, check the legitimacy, because there are a lot of scam uh, projects out there with the, you know, the speculation and the saturation of the market. Sure. Um, and check, the final thing is the, what we call the token metrics, you know, how, what's the supply of the coin, how much does it cost, sure. and stuff like that. So can, I, can I just come in just before you go to the chef so that he can finish up? Two more points, which is that if you're attached to money, you know, this is not for you because your emotions will be going up and down. So if you're, you know, investment is, is to do with risk. And the last point is, you know, invest as much as you can afford to lose, really. That's um, great, that's great so Thank you, Mujibur. Sheikh, you know, what would be your kind of uh, final comments uh, about someone who might be thinking about doing this, not yeah. sure, we had a lot of calls so, saying... So, so, yeah, my advice actually is broader than just cryptocurrency. It also relates to online currency trades because a lot of people out there yes. it's a big fad now a lot of young people come and ask me can I go onto these platforms and trade currencies and they do intraday currencies and sometimes they hold them overnight um, and essentially if you're speculating on an artificial unit that fundamentally is prohibited by Sharia so you know you need to ask yourself what am, what, you know, am I buying another currency because it's artificial if, it, if you're buying gold or you're buying salt or you're buying wheat or barley or dates you're buying a commodity nobody can prohibit you from doing that right but you're buying an artificial unit in order to speculate on its price, whether it's pounds or dollars or euros or cryptocurrency, you're essentially gambling, in my view. So, so we need to be careful about this. Okay. Um, huge thanks to uh, Mujibul, Ashraf, uh, Sheikh Salman for coming on the show. Uh, thank you for all our callers who have uh, called in and uh, you know contributed to the discussion. I think um, it's, it's, it's a very interesting discussion. It's a very healthy discussion. And I think uh, what we need to do is, uh, as the panel members have said, we need to research before we think about investing, understanding uh, this market, which is relatively young, and, and also getting advice from people who might be involved in that but at the same time you know despite the opportunities and, and the appeal that it might have understanding the kind of uh, religious aspects to it and what are the kind of uh, you know uh, advice that's been given and what are the kind of rulings to do with this so I think 
from from what we've discussed today, I think it's once again, it's a very interesting discussion. And, you know, I thank the panel members for coming on and uh, discussing this with us. Amra alhamdulillah, school cryptocurrency lo yar online trading lo yar matota khorsi. Amra panel members ekhoi so in tantan view, tantan khene khoroin, khollek khene balai bo future akile effect to itofare. Amra shekhe wo khoi so in tain ekta mane Islamic Sharia angle taki ekta ruling kita tain tain opinion oilo kita ekta jaiza sen na na. So afnara hun choin. So afnara please hopefully enjoy khorsi and understanding khorsi. And inshallah, bala tahokar. Amra afnara next time inshallah dekhmo. Inshallah see you soon. Assalamualaikum.